What's up, YouTube to the sector? This is Drew. And we're from Not Too Nerdy Entertainment. Today is episode 13 of our podcast, and we're going to be discussing games that we did in the past week. Those games were actually Ghost Recon, Future Soldier, we also did Dragon's Dogma, and the last topic we're going to be discussing is actually E3 and the Big 3. We're going to talk about who won E3, the losers of E3, and on top of that, we're going to be discussing what was the last thing? We're going to talk about our games of the show. There you go, that's it. So if you want to just hop straight into it. Yeah, sure. So you did the first uh, game we're going to talk about. You did the walkthrough and the review for it, and that was uh, Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon, yes So uh, what did you think of the game? Now, let's start out with the story. Um, the story wasn't anything too special. It's a normal story with the uh, thing about crazy rushings, powerful weapons, uh, and, uh, you know, it's pretty much Armageddon. Your goal, uh, you play as uh, future so futuristic soldiers, you know, a ghost team. And uh, this game is about stealth, okay? So you have to seriously save the day and prevent Armageddon. The story is not, you know, unique whatsoever. It's mm -hmm. it's been done before, but with that said, it wasn't done in a bad way. Right. They still did it in a good way, but it's nothing new. They just, you know, it was more about the gameplay for this game for me. So I'm just gonna jump straight into the gameplay itself right okay. now, because I think that's majority. That's what separates this game from a lot of other third-person shooters, especially, especially like military third-person shooters. So, this game right off the bat, um, I didn't think this game was going to be too good. Like, I'm not going to lie, I thought oh, it's a third-person shooter. Uh, the last third-person shooter, this style, I thought, oh, it's going to be like uh, SOCOM or some, something like that. And like, I, I don't really like the control, like, it, it's so hard to shoot someone when you're in a you know, third person shooter form. It, your over shoulder camera angle and you're trying to aim someone, you never get that precision oh, shoot. First person shooter. You know, I, I do not like that when you're shooting. So I thought, you know, here we go, whatever. Just gonna be just like everything else. Mm -hmm. Not to mention this game was delayed. This game was delayed for a while and yeah. you know, it took a long time for them to make this game. And usually when that happens, uh, it's not know, good news. It's not good news at all. I mean, Duke Nukem, um, yeah, yeah, that's a perfect example. So when you delay a game, it doesn't look too good. Mm -hmm. But I was shocked. Right away, the game, like, the way you play, oh my goodness, like, you have control of the character. Like, for the most part, you have control. Now, when I talk about control, I'm talking about, you can tell that they seriously copied off Gears of War. Now, when I'm saying Gears of War, when you're running, you know, when you're running stuff, the camera does that camera shake where yeah, it follows, yeah. it's the same thing. The same format. Yeah. yeah, it's the same exact format as Gears of War. Now, I know people are like, well, they just copy us on. That's pretty much going to be the standard because there's a game that's uh, going to be coming out soon that uh, Spec Ops a lot yeah. and it has the same exact thing. Yeah. And like, they, people realize that, that that gives you more precision, more control. So a lot of people are putting that in place when you're running stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, the shooting, like, um, you can lock onto a character, pop up, shoot them, drop down. And it has a, a, a good cover system, you know, uh, it's a very standard cover system. And Is this something that was in the uh, other uh, games in the series, or this totally new? The this, the, the way the cover system working is new. Like, everything, everything in this game seems newer from what people would usually expect from, uh, you know, any Ghost Recon game, the, any yeah. Tom Clancy game in general, you know what I mean? Um, except, I'm going to get to that one part, how it's related to another Tom Clancy game. But uh, besides that, like, you're talking about the cover system, everything works well in the game and it's so realistic and there's parts where you're hiding behind like a, a wall or something like that or uh, what, like a cylinder block or something like that and what happens, they're shooting like crazy and like it's like an anime scene, it's a reaction that the character is going like this and shaking because there's bricks of breaking on top of it, you feel the vibration, you hear the sound it's it's crazy, and it, it, the way they designed it, it, it worked perfectly for the game. Now, there's some errors in control, which seems to happen all the time for third-person shooters. Yeah. There's always something that's not right, and the one thing that's not right for me is the jump button. Uh, if you have any action button, where it's a run, jump, you need to have that separate. Yeah, cannot, so everything was not to you the cannot, cover and the cover the system. Yeah, you cannot that. have the cover system and jump as the same thing. You mm -hmm. just can't. Yeah. Because when you're on the wall, like for example, if you look at my walkthrough for the Ghost Recon, one of the videos, uh, someone threw a grenade and there's a grenade marker 
you know, in the game, you have plenty of time to move out of the way. I'm trying to move out of the way. And I press X. I'm like, okay, I'm going to jump over the wall because it, the, the ledge is lower than me. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll jump over the wall and, you know, and I'll move on to the next section, move closer, like my teammates did. And I press X and he gets off from the cover wall. I press X again, he goes back to the cover wall. I'm like, okay, I press X again to get off the wall so I can run. And as I'm trying to run, he, he goes from one side to another side. Yeah. Don't like it. Not, not me whatsoever. It's super fused. I ended up dying because I was stuck in between the wall and trying to jump. Yeah. You know, it's not neat. It, right. It's simple to have one button to jump, one button to do cover system. You can't have the same one. Yeah. Because there's so many. Instant. What do you mean the vault over, right? The, I'm sorry. Yeah. The vault over. Vault over. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's always, there's so many chances, especially in the military game like that with grenades. That, that's, yeah. I think that's the time where you need to get away quickly. And you can't. Yeah. You, you can't throw grenades back or anything. Yeah, like from what I saw, you couldn't. I mean, maybe there is, but I I didn't see that. It, yeah. I didn't see anything that's a they would have some type, type of yeah, some type of indicator. Yeah. It didn't say anything from what I saw. So that that something I didn't like. You know, that to me was it got me upset because it was so random because everything else is working so well, and all of a sudden you got to that point, you're like, who, who designed this part? You know, like yeah. like I made no sense whatsoever. And that really got me upset, like, to be honest, that part of the game. But there's other things in the game that you know, sometimes you'll be in a cinematic view, you know what I mean? And you'll go from cinematic view back to regular view, and it's all, it's fluid motion. It, it's very consistent. It's a perfect transition from cinematic to gameplay. Now, there's some parts of the game that you could tell that it, they took time to make this game. Because th there's a part where the president, the Russian president, right? is saying the speech. And you look at his, his animation, the way he was designed, he looks sort of like he was built in the PlayStation 2 world and the PlayStation 1 world, which is weird, because it, its features and space wasn't there. But yet you go to another scene where the, the, the soldiers are so detailed. Yeah. So it's inconsistent, but you can Is that just between the cinematics and the gameplay, or is that just throughout the entire screen? It, it's just the cinematics, some of the yeah. cutscenes. So yeah, you're yeah. saying the cutscenes are not up yeah. to par with the gameplay? Some, some, yeah. some of the cutscenes, not yeah. all of them. That's what I'm saying. Know. Some of them will be like, it'll be like in the same scene. The one cutscene will look and another cutscene looks perfect, like yeah, brand new. And then you can tell why. It's because, like I said, they were delayed. So when you're delayed, they already have one part done, they try to add another part to it, and they don't have time to go back to fix the other part. And that's, or it could be budget. <laughs> yeah. right? They ran out of their budget. I, I, don't, you know, I don't think it's budget, because it completely looks like they were designed on two different systems. One yeah. looks like it's designed for PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1 area, and I mean, the other one looks flawless in the way it looks. So you how, can tell it's How long system. was this game announced? Like, you know, around the time it was announced? It's been a while. Right? It's been a couple years. A couple like, years? It's been like... It's delayed over a year. Yeah. Like, so it could be just that much of a shift in technology. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it, you could tell right away just by looking at it, it was not meant to be in that time period when it came out. Some parts of it. And the other yeah. parts just looks like, like you said yourself, when you saw the glass, like, oh, that looks really detailed. Looks no, good. it looks really good. That's, that's the thing. Like, at least the gameplay, the way the actual game looked, for the most part, looked flawless, mm -hmm. the way it looked. So um, there, there's a lot of things, though. Like, that was kind of inconsistent. Now, I'm going to go into uh, another part, going back to the story real quick, since I didn't really explain the story as much. You do get a chance, just like every other game, do you fly in vehicles, you go on different things, you can shoot from a helicopter. It, it seemed like this game took a little bit out of every game. Call yeah. of Duty, Battlefield, they took a little bit out of everything, mm -hmm. Gears of War. Every top shooter that was there, they took a little bit out of it and then added some of their own. And, and there's a good elements that they took, you think? Or yeah, they took. They try to take the best elements out of everything, like the running aspect, like I said. Then you're taking like some of the the gunner aspects, like you're that you're shooting off a helicopter, like Battlefield, yeah, and, yeah. like with some of the. I know it's like more of the cinematic elements, it's cinematic, it's Michael so, Bay type of things yeah. from Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah I think Call of Duty. That's, it, it seemed like that's what they're going for, taking a little bit out of everything what people liked. Yeah, and. Uh, which brings me to the next thing that it looked like that they sort of took away from is uh, Metal Gear Solid. Now, Tom Clancy is known for stealth. A lot of the games, the other game just recently announced is a Splinter Cell. You know, Splinter Cell, all those games are stealthy type games. You know, they're made to be stealthy. Yeah. But this game was a direct, I hate to say copy, but they, they definitely took the elements out of Metal Gear Solid 
and place it in there. Yeah. Even some of the sound effects were direct sounds from Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. What kind of sound effects are you saying when you get uh, alerted? Or? Uh, the, when there's alerts, when you select a weapon, the weapon selection, it goes like clink, clink, yeah. like that it makes yeah. that beeping noise. And um, certain aspects, like you have to, you know, there's one part, the one mission where the solo mission. This is the first time you're now with your teammates, mm -hmm. okay? You're in a solo mission and you're there and you have to keep stealth. Anytime you crouch down, you're you're visible. You know, just like Metal Gear Solid. I'm talking about Metal Gear Solid 4, I think it's a direct clone of that. Yeah. And you have to use a camouflage, you have to use stealth, and you have to go somewhere without being seen. You know, this is sort of not the best thing in the game, like for some people, because some people like to play the game and if they get seen, so what, they keep going. But there's certain parts of the game where you have to reach a certain point, and once you reach that point, then if you get seen, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But if you don't reach that point and you get seen, the mission failed, you have to start all over again. Yeah. So the whole point is stealth. You have to make sure that you know there's no stealth involved. Um, so that that to me was you know it, it's sort of like a direct copy. Yeah. You know, well, you're not a fan of the home tire mechanism if you get seen, game over. Now, I don't really like that they force that upon you. Yeah. You know, but I mean it does it makes it interesting. It makes you calm down and take your time. Yeah. You know, which I'll tell you later what happens in the game. But just keep in mind that stealth. When you talk about stealth, you talk about taking your time, picking out the best route, and not be seen. Just remember that because at the end, what I'm talking about is you're going to hear exactly how this game ends. But anyway, this game also includes co-op, four-player co-op, okay? That's a huge thing in the game. You know, I suggest if you want to play this game, it's probably the most, it's probably better playing with friends. Yeah. You know, you play with people, you'll be more consistent, it'll probably be an easier game and a shorter game because this game actually took me close to 14 hours to beat. Yeah. Alright, it's a pretty long third person shooter. It's yeah. a long third person shooter, but I think half of it is because I was with complete idiots on the computers. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Like the computers are like that. At moments they're idiots and then sometimes they're geniuses, but majority of the time when you play a four player co op game and then yeah. you have three computers playing with you, then they're idiots. It's the way it is. Um, the one feature I did do like that they added in the game though. You can actually highlight people that you want to shoot. So and you actually strategize. Be like, oh, um, you take number one. You take this guy. You take this guy. And when you highlight all four of them at the same time, four people at the same time, and you're the fourth person you, you aim, as soon as everyone says they're ready, you can press the fire button. Everyone fires at the same time. And it does like a slow motion cinematic effect where everyone, you see the bullet in slow motion kill all four players at the same time. That is that is the best feature I've ever seen in the game. Yeah, and there's also um, with the drones as well, right? Yes, yeah, so you can use uh, drones in the game. Uh, the drones that actually fly, you can actually once it lands, you got to turn into like a little remote control car, which is also Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid Four had both. Yeah, the, the, that uh, little robot thing could be both, and it could do the same thing. Right. Um, but um, the point is, you could actually highlight people in there. So. Save like I didn't feel like shooting. Mm -hmm. um, I saw three enemies. I highlighted one, two, three, and my three teammates will shoot them. And as soon as they're ready, they they move around. They're that smart. Sometimes, like I said, smart enough to know that they have to move around to line up a shot. Mm -hmm. They they move around, line up a shot, and as soon as they're ready, they'll tell you ready. Yeah. And then you press the fire button, they'll fire for you. Now, I'm gonna jump into the next thing, the gunsmith. There's gunsmith in online, and there's gunsmith in game. Gunsmith, where you can customize your own gun and stuff. So I went to the second level, and I'm like, I'm gonna customize my own gun, do it my way. Big mistake, YouTube. All right, you need to have a silencer on some of these weapons. So what happened was, the second level is straight into a stealth mission. Okay, can't make a sound. <laughs> I selected a gun with no no um, silencer. Silencer. I took it off. I yeah. had a gun. Gunsman, I'm like, I'll take it off and cuss my. He even warned me in the game. He said, "You sure you, know, that you don't want a silencer?" Blah blah blah. And I didn't read. It. I'm like, whatever. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Turns out that you can't do that because, like I said, if you make one sound, you get caught, you lose a round. Yeah. I was so upset. So I had to order my teammate. I actually learned how to play the game better because of that. Because yeah. I had to order them 
to shoot, and I didn't fire at all. That was the only way I was able to beat that round because I was able to order them around, and that's the best way to learn. Like you can actually beat the game without shooting and instruct your teammates what to do, what to do. So that that's another strategy. And like I didn't do it on purpose, but I ended up doing it because that was my only way to do it. So that that was one thing right there. And um, fast forward to the end of the game real quick. The end of the game. It's pretty interesting. I, I just described to you how important stealth is in this game. You know, they emphasize stealth in every level. You need stealth here. You need to work as a team. You need to move slowly and strategize. Well, at the end of the game, it wasn't like that. At the end of the game, you have to go on a full-out sprint. Okay, you have to go on a full-out sprint and rush, kill people. Doesn't matter if you're seen or not. Cause you have to do this quickly. You have to chase two targets. Okay. These targets aren't like normal targets. They are sprinting away from you, all right, while they have people back of them up with RPGs, machine guns, like heavy gunners. They have every sort of weapon shooting at you, okay? This game isn't like a normal game where you could take like a lot of hits. You could take like one hit at times. If they aim properly, one hit could kill you. Yeah. And somehow you get to catch up to these guys that are sprint away from you. And it's not just one spot. You have to constantly, every, every spot you go, you stop here, or they stop for a second, then they start sprinting again. It was very hard. Yeah. And I think it was even harder for me, like I said, I played by myself. I didn't play with, like, friends. Right. It might have been easier if I had more real people aiming for stuff, but the computers at that point just stopped playing. And it was more just me. Mm -hmm. And they're following me. So yeah. it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't too good at all. <laughs> All right, so uh, my only real question is, you know, now this whole entire thing with the military shooters now, we're going more into this uh, futuristic element. Mm -hmm. How do you feel um, the new Call of Duty is going to compare to this game? Do you think they're going to have some of the same type of technology? Or? Well, we saw the video E3. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we got to see exactly what it is. They have drones. They look like they already took that drone element. They had drones before Call of Duty, but this drones is more like, kill zone, believe it or not, yeah. where you got those flying robots next to you and they actually fire shots and shoot people, mm -hmm. those drones are shooting. Those yeah. drones, like you order, like all I saw in the video, like, yeah, and yeah, yeah, you yeah. order them to come and fire and they follow them and they fire. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be too crazy because you're going to get cheap kills without even killing someone. Yeah. You know, will it work in the story mode yet? Yeah. Right. Will it work for online play? I don't know how they're going to, how it's going to work. Yeah. Speaking of online play, what do you think of uh, those weapons? Uh, Real quick about online play, it's a good online play, you know, it's really good, I just sucked at it. I'm just going to be honest, I was not good at it, but besides that, like, everything seemed okay. It was actually the best third person shooter, I'm not going to say third person military style shoot. I'm not going to say it's better in Gears online, because Gears is better online play, mm -hmm. but I'm saying as a third person shooter, military, like military shooter. style. Yeah. I think it's the best one, oh, nice. hands down, so far. It's the smoothest one. There's different missions, different styles, and uh, there, there's different things you can do in right. the game. So you can still crouch down and use the cloak, but you know, like when you're invisible in the game, it's not really being invisible. You can still see the reflection. You can still see if someone's invisible. Yeah. So uh, besides that, I mean, it, it's I don't really have to say too much. It's just like every other military game, it's different matches and stuff like that. I just think that they did well for what they were doing. Yeah, so I think it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, Spec Ops Online, you'll be doing well yeah, for that. That's see how those two compare, because they're both third-person military shooters. Direct comparison. Yeah. I think, uh, but the thing is, uh, supposedly, from what I saw when we went to uh, PAX East, you're able to see that this one's focused on story. Yeah. So, and I was shocked, Ghost Recon's story wasn't bad either. They focus on story too, so they're directly competing against each other. Because yeah. they, they care about their campaign. Yeah. So let's see what they're, they're going to offer. Because this is a whole different end of the world type thing too. This is a different way in the future. So, I don't know, it seems like all these military games are going towards that yeah. futuristic type thing. But, uh, you know, not too many games focus in the past. But uh, there is some games. Yeah. Uh, this one game... Uh, I think a Japanese company. It's it's, company. it's pretty Japanese uh, game. And uh, you got a little little problem with that game. Well, yeah, speaking about you suck at the multiplayer. I, yeah, I definitely suck at I this suck game. At the <laughs> <laughs> I definitely suck at this game. So I uh, played uh, Dragon's Dogma. Um, first, I'm gonna speak about um, just about the you know the story, what I thought about the graphics and the gameplay, and then you know we'll go on to another topic we have about the game. 
But um, just talking about the game in general, um, it's uh, the main mechanic in this game is a pawn system, and the way it works is that you can actually recruit um, uh, party members from other people's games into your um, your your world basically, and you also have your main pawn that's always consistently with you that levels up, and they can go into um, other uh, players' worlds that uh, connect to a server. And this is an open world action RPG. Is there a limit to how many pawns you have at a time? Or? Um, so it's three pawns at a time. One right. is your main pawn, and two other pawns from other people's mm -hmm. games. Okay. And those two pawns do not level up from other people's games. Only your main pawn levels up. Right. So what the way the system works is you go to this um, pawn guild or these little pawn stones throughout the world, and you can um, swap out your uh, pawns depending on the level you have. You can actually, you can actually you get um, points that are allocated after each quest, to, which is money to buy these pawns. So you should essentially buy pawns at any level you want, um, depending if you have enough points to do so. So you know, so basically, um, you know, the story of the game has to do with that. You're um, called the Arisen, and you're like the hero of the world. And a dragon comes along, and it takes your heart, and then you're like reborn. So once you're reborn, then you can pick. You know what type of class you want to have. It's nine different classes. Um, some are melee focused, some are ranged, magic, and so forth. What is your class? Um, I picked um, at first. The good, the good thing about the game is that you can switch out your class anytime you want. Uh, I any, started anywhere in the game. Any, anywhere in the game, you could choose any class you want. I started off as a um, it's like a archer type class, and then um, I'm actually moved over later in the game to a magic archer. And the uh, cool thing about the um, difference between, between those is like. You know, they have hybrid classes, so like Magic Archer, he had like homing missiles that he can um, shoot in the vicinity of uh, monsters and enemies and it would just uh, lash right onto him. And he could also shoot um, arrows in the air and they would home down and take out enemies. So it's pretty cool that they so have... So they shoot straight up in there? Just straight up, and then it just rains. That's, like, that's like straight old school. That's not they, they really did. They aimed and just... Yeah. It's amazing how people used to do that. There's a little difference, a little bit more magic oriented. You know, there's yeah. a lot of more ar arrows in the air, but... Um, in terms of the story, um, you know, it, 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 the story wasn't the you know the main feature of this game in terms of where I, you could tell what they worked on because like all the NPCs and all the um, if you look at any of the NPCs in the game, they're all out of sync with the, with the speech and the voice acting is just horrible. Well, and, you know. that and like it's Japanese, right? Yeah. So like the the translation to English is yeah. never for any <laughs> game is never good. Yeah, like, and you could definitely it's tell just the way it is. Like, that's why sometimes I just feel like they should just keep it Japanese, mm -hmm. just keep everything Japanese, design Japanese, and just have subtitles because there's no point. You might as well do it so to make it look fluid. Yeah, you know what I mean, there's no there's no point. Yeah, I kind I kind of feel like they didn't. Have to spend time on doing that in the game, like having a whole entire thing, uh, everyone being fully voiced and all that stuff like that. I mean, I, I get what they're trying to go for the whole entire Skyrim thing, but you know, in terms of that, they didn't do a good job. You know, there, you know, there's no reason to put it in. I feel like you should just got your quest and you go on and do your quest. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're playing this game for story, you're not really gonna um, enjoy it, in my opinion. I think what you're gonna enjoy it for is the the gameplay of the game, which is pretty good. You know, before, before I start talking about the gameplay, I'm going talk a little bit about the graphics and the world of the game. Um, it's your standard um, RPG world. It's just a lot of, you know, browns and greens. There's, there's nothing too amazing. The thing about, what I feel about this game is that the world is not interesting, but the creatures in the world are really interesting. And that's really, I think, the highlight of the game is that, you know, this game has some of the best enemy design I've seen in an RPG. You know, there's all these different types of um, creatures that you fight. You fight um, this thing called Chimera. I talked about it before when I talked about um, when I saw the game at PAX, and that's kind of. It was also in the demo as well. The lion, uh, yeah. What else? Uh, a lion. A lion snake. with a snake tail with a goat on the back. Yeah. yeah. You know, and there, there's a lot of like cool different one uh, monsters like that. There's one called uh, Cockatrice, I think it's called. It's like um, a big flying griffin monster, yeah, but yeah. it has a rooster. Like has rooster features on it, yeah. and that's what they call the cockatrice. Yeah, and they have, um, you know, hydras you fight and uh, big ogres. Uh, if you watch one of my walkthroughs, you'll see that I scream like a little girl, and this ogre sneaked up on me on a dungeon. You that's know, just, <laughs> I saw that. And I was just, I was like, what? 
<laughs> and then it was like, and like I thought he was, I thought you were joking. I literally thought it wasn't for real. Then I realized yeah, it, like, it was you were real. really for real. And then, like, that scared the shit out of me. And then the funniest thing to be got to watch it. Like it, I forgot which video it is. It has video like seven or yeah. It, it's it's video. When you look at it, hey, you have the annotation inside of the video. Goes directly to that because he starts cracking up for like not only does he scream like a girl, like straight up scream. So it, do not listen with headphones because you'll yeah. blow out your ears. Yeah. But he screams and then he starts cracking up. Like he's laughing for like a good two minutes. Just he couldn't. He'll just randomly <laughs> laugh. He'll start talking and randomly laugh the whole video. It's so funny. It, yeah. it just yeah, that's the funny up. thing about this game. I feel like it has its highs and then it has its lows, and that's that's really what it comes down to. The, the gameplay of the game, where it's, you know, they had really good um, dungeon design, but the open world design is, I, I hated it. I could not stand it. So, I mean, the, the good thing about the game in terms of gameplay is the action combat is really good. Especially when you're fighting these monsters and you have these big boss battles. It's really, it's really thrilling to watch as well as play, you know. It, it, it draws out a little bit, but I think you get the satisfaction when you do complete some of these bosses, because they're pretty difficult, you know? And I feel like the, the, the game, it does, you know, some parts are a little bit easier than others, and some are excruciatingly hard. And what the, the thing about the game is what's really hard about it is um, just the whole entire way the open world is structured. So in this game, the biggest complaint I have, and I've seen, you know, a lot of people that are playing the game, is there's no fast travel in it. So every, everywhere you go, you have to... Have to heard about that. Yeah, so you have, to, you have to travel back and forth. This can take up to, let's say, like a half an hour, depending which way you're going. And why it takes so long is, one, there's a stamina system. The stamina system, um, it runs out very quickly. I believe it does upgrade as you level yeah. up. But it, it's, it upgrades as you level up, from what I found out. Yeah, but it, from initially from playing it, it does like regenerate. I, I felt, you know, I put in my room like a snail's place. Like, I felt a lot of time you're walking, then you're running, and then you got you got to pace yourself. Well, Japanese actually do that for a lot of their games, like mm -hmm. uh, Zelda, for yeah. example. The Skyward Sword had yeah. the the stamina bar on there. The reason why they do that, they feel like uh, you shouldn't to make it more realistic, because they feel like someone should be able to sprint for the whole time. Yeah, they shouldn't be able to sprint, and that's why as you level up, it's sort of like you're, you know, you get used to it eventually. Mm -hmm. You still won't have. Flawless, sprint to forever, yeah. but they try to time it. I think a lot of games do that, though. If you really think about it. Like, yeah, I mean, Call of Duty, like, I, Skyrim oh. does it. The only, th the funny thing is though, coming off the last open world RPG I played, yeah. Amalorc didn't have it, yeah. so it, it's kind of like, why is this necessary? Mm -hmm. Like, I would just rather you be able to sprint all the time, especially when you're going back and forth, and you don't have a fast travel system. So that really killed me, you know, going back and forth. Um, you, there's these little mini boss fights in between points, like. You have this big griffin fight you have to have going back and forth. You actually have an ogre you have to fight, a chimera you have to fight right before. You can run past this, but it's very difficult. See, that goes back to like what Japanese people always did. If you look at like their old, like, uh, the, I'm talking about old RPG games, like from back in the day, even Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy, you can't even move a foot without like a yeah. boom and another monster that. goes there. Uh, then you beat them and then all of a sudden you did, uh, another monster comes <laughs> up. Like they do that all the time. I don't know why. But I, I think it's it's for um, like reasons of you know stretching out the gameplay. Like they also help you level up though quicker too by doing yeah. all that stuff. But wow. It, considering if you win or not, yeah. if you're not winning, you're not level up anywhere. You're just dying or you run fast. So. Yeah. A lot of, I, at first, you know, it, it's pretty, you know, they start you off easy, you know, you're fighting some goblins, you're fighting, um, you know, just little, like, birds, I forgot, harpies, you fight, you know, that's that's pretty simple. Then you start finding chimeras and, and uh, ogres and goblins on, on your way to these places, and it just gets really tedious, and it's a very difficult. Um, but what I, you know, really like about the gameplay is that, you know, there's a lot of variety, you could switch out. Um, your, your classes, like I said, at any time. And also, um, they took out a lot of, you know, they streamlined some of the RPG elements as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you can, every time you level up, you don't have to allocate points or anything like that. You just buy new skills. The only thing I don't like about that system is, it seems like everything is done in the hub town. Mm -hmm. So if you want to level up, get your armor, get any item that you need, you have to do it in the hub town. So the problem with that is, you know, you're going on these long, um, you know, quests, that take up maybe half an hour to an hour. If you don't have all the right items that you need and you don't gear up accordingly, 
you're, you're not going to make it or you're going to have to return all the way back to town. See, that's why I feel like all these games should have, like, it should be take place in the hood. In the hood, every block, every corner, you got some guy yeah. selling something. You're yeah, like, yeah, 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 I got what you need right here. Yeah, you need yeah. that plant? You need that plant? You need an herb? Yeah, I got those herbs right here. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's the thing. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that they actually placed um, throughout the world is the pawn, the pawn stones. So you can switch out the pawns and um, like these rest areas, so you can rest if you get to that area. That's the only thing they did. Those are not located as many places I would like. So, so when you went to a rest area, did you take it out too? Like, yeah, you yeah it, rest? it cost 500 gold. I don't know why. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, and, and just in general, I mean, I feel like the game, like, I would have loved if this was just like a linear, like, go to this quest type of game and, and just fight a boss and then that's pretty much it. You can fast travel back and forth. I feel like the whole entire open world system was kind of broken in this game. I mean, if you watch some of my videos, you'll see that I, I, I get lost a lot. And, and, and that's mostly because um, the way the mini map is structured. Um, is, you know, in most games you'll have um, your path, which you can see, and then you'll have the icon to where your path is. In this game, um, the way it works is that they put your um, your marker on the end of the circle, and then they don't uncover exactly what you know it turns you know the branching paths of the roads. So a lot of time I'll go down one path and that'll be a dead end. I have to come around. <laughs> and then go around. So, uh, you know, uh, if this game was on the Wii U, maybe that helped if the map was on the little touch screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly how it is. You, know? you guys pick up the screen. You have two screens. You can you look know? at the map. <laughs> it's funny that, that um, when they showed uh, actually a Dark Siders, that that's one of the features they have in the game. Really? They have the map on the Wii U screen. They even know <laughs> that this is a problem in some of these. What games. it should do is have a map like this. When you pick it up, it's like it's see through. <laughs> so that no see through, you see the line, the path of yeah. where you're supposed to go, and you go like this, and you can literally follow the line. Yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, I, I really, I really think like at this point in time, like yeah, just put the Breath of Auto mini map um, type of system where you have the line that traces you to where you need to go. Hey, maybe it'll take some people out of experience. Maybe that'd be an option some people could take out, but I would love that. What, what happened is the reason why they, they, they're, they're doing all this stuff like this now mm -hmm. is because back in the day, people used to get pissed off that freaking arrow. The arrow is floating there. Mm -hmm. The arrow's going like this. The arrow's leaning this way. It's turning. Wait, they can left now? Wait, no. Am I supposed to go straight? Like, that's why people got pissed off. Yeah. They used to only have it for every game, especially racing it every time. Yeah, yeah. That I, and I, see, the, this is the thing. I don't like anything in the world like that. Like, I don't like the um, the Golden Trail type of thing. Like, that's in Fable. But the good thing about it is, like, map it to a button. Like, dates place have the same exact thing. If you map it to a button, you can toggle it in and all, out. That helpful. Or just put it on the mini map. The thing is, there's yeah. so much crap being used for every button. We don't have any buttons left to use. Yeah. So just keep it on, I would say, just yeah. keep it on the mini map. It draws a waypoint where you need to go. And, and just do that from now on. That's where you have a button to scratch your ass. We have a button for everything. Yeah, that's what we need. That, that, that button would be great. Like, there's, there's a button for everything. Yeah. Everything is used up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but... What, uh, what's next though with that? So basically the whole entire uh, big thing with this game was, you know, I, I spent nearly 18 hours playing this game within the, I would say the last two weeks. So, you know, I did not get to finish this game in the time frame that I wanted to. And it's, it's exactly for uh, some of the reasons I stated. You know, first um, I would like to say that the difficulty in the game does vary depending on what type of armor you have, the type of skills you have, how well prepared you are for that battle, the certain type of class you have, and the certain type of pawns you have. I think uh, playing this game, I could have did a, a lot of research in terms of what I needed to do. I, reading about the game, a lot of people have said that, you know, buy pawns five levels above you or so, or buy, you know, pawns that are, you know, leveled up as much as you can buy. That way, it'll curb the difficulty a little bit. Because I feel like, there are some balance issues where I think some parts they made it a little bit more difficult than other parts and that's because either you had to do the side quest which you needed to gain those pawns mm -hmm. or you needed that to acquire the skills and armor that you needed to take on those bosses because if you'll watch some of my bosses they, they took a lot of hits it took like maybe 45 minutes for that griffin fight and I think that that's mainly because I didn't do any of the side quests I, I didn't level my pawns to a higher enough level and you know various things yeah. like that. But for do you think now this is one of those games that you should actually have a strategy guide? 
they, this might be a game that you could purchase a strategy guide for, for someone that actually wants to sit down and beat it, that's not the best at this style I th of games. I, th I think so. Because like, I think this game seems like it was set up perfectly to buy a strategy guide for it, mm -hmm. to tell you do this, do this, you can do this, yeah. you can do here. You know, I mean, the, the strategy guides are, you know, they're kind of old school. I think the wikis are the new type no, of thing that no, most people do. No, I mean, like, they yeah. literally have full, like, they still sell the strategy. It's not really old school when they, for this situation, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, you could wiki something and someone will tell you do this, they'll, they'll tell you their personal opinion, they, they've mm -hmm. listed there, but you really think about it. Strategy guides, the developers. The, develop, the developers. The strategy of doing it. Like, yeah. That's the way you do it. I, I, I hope it would be helpful, because the, the systems they put in the game work. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, would, I would hope that you know there's experts out there, but I would think you know a lot of people that would love this game are the, that Demon Souls crowd. The people that like that you know, that type of difficulty as well as... Which, the Dark Souls? Dark Souls, Demon yeah. Souls, yeah. Th those type of games where it has a, you know, it's for the hardcore, you know, mm -hmm. it has a, a, a good difficulty curve on it, and they don't streamline a lot of things. Like, a lot of people, they say, you know, oh, the game doesn't have a fast travel system. Well, it shouldn't. That, that's the whole entire point of the game. You're supposed to be going back and forth. You're supposed to feel like you're on a real adventure, yeah. and, um, you know, you, 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 you can die. You want a real adventure to come See, back from the mission. This, this is where developers, and I can't blame them, this is where developers get stuck. Yeah. You have people that say games are too short. We're paying all this money. Mm -hmm. We're doing all this, you know, where these games are so quick and all this stuff. Then you have developers take that and like, okay, fine. We're going to make a game now that it's going to take you a long while. you got to build yourself. You really have to strategize. It's going to take you a while to do all this stuff. Yeah. And now people are like, this game's too hard. It's too long. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're caught in between. What do you yeah. want? Do you want a long game that, that you've been asking for, a long game that's a little bit more challenging, or do you want that short game? Do you, which one? You can't have both. Like, yeah. that's, I think that's where a developer, I'm speaking as someone that wants to be a developer, yeah. that, that in between, like that, that you're you're caught in between, you know. Yeah, I totally gonna, agree. If you're gonna make a style game like this, and you're gonna, you got to aim for one audience. Mm -hmm. There's half of them gonna think it's too long, half of them are gonna think it's great. So mm -hmm. you gotta pick one, you yeah. know. And, and I think, and, that, and that's the thing. Choice. I think I think difficulties in games is, is a very difficult thing to do. You don't want to get into you know a situation where you have the easy mode, the hard mode, and the normal mode. Because I really hate that in games as well. But sometimes it is nice when you can switch that on the fly. Like, uh, you know, Skyrim, uh, you know, I did play it on normal, but, you know, on the previous Elder Scrolls, they're a little bit more difficult because some of these systems were in. And I'll, 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 not, I'll knock it down. Max Payne's another perfect example. I knocked it down. And I think, you know, the ability to sometimes knock it down does, you know, if you want to get through the experience, is a little bit better. Especially, you know, if there's something, like, especially if the gameplay is not as good, and but you're in it for, like, the story, sometimes that's a good thing to do. You know, because sometimes, you know, p people are in it for different reasons. Sometimes people are not in it for the gameplay. They're maybe in it for the story. And sometimes people don't want the story. They don't want the story in their way either. So I think you can go both ways. And I think this is the type of experience where I, it's definitely, I would definitely say check it out. Rent it, you know. See if you can deal with those systems. If you can deal with the lack of fast travel and, you know, the difficulty of the game, th this could be a game that, you know, you would really like. And I, and I could definitely see that because the combat is really good. But we'll definitely put a link below for your review to, so they can fully see everything you completely feel about that. I mean, yeah. they heard it now, but it's better to read it because he tells you the story, he tells you everything. He went in you know, great length to explain everything. So, you know, the game's a long game and he explained it pretty well. So, um, yeah, so I guess that brings us to our final topic, huh? Yeah. This thing called E3 happened. Yeah, I, don't know I, I don't know about that. Some some nerd said that it was like the Super Bowl for nerds. I think, I think that was me, but... Uh, I don't know. I was excited. It was so much news. Like yeah. we, we posted so much stuff. All I know is so, my my finger. I have carpal syndrome. My, my fingers are killing me. Man. Yeah. So this week, <laughs> we we just kept uh, posting stuff up on the website. You know, lots of news, lots of videos, lots of trailers. The Twitter was on fire this week. Yeah. So definitely go notinary.com. We'll put the link as always on the bottom. But you definitely gotta check that. We have lots of news. If lots just, of gameplay. Yeah. All the, like all our favorite stuff we put up. A lot. Uh, some announcements for new games. Just everything. Man. So let's talk about the big three. Let's yeah, go straight after that. Big three, we're talking about Nintendo, we're talking about PlayStation, and we're talking to, or Sony, sorry. And we're talking about uh, Microsoft or Xbox. Now, yeah. obviously, that's not in the order we're talking about. We just, we, I just threw those names out. So I'll start off with you. Which one do you think 
I want you to say who won E3 in your opinion, who brought out the best content, yep. and who lost E3, who didn't, you know, bring out enough. You'll probably be better telling who lost, but <laughs> definitely who won for me was uh, Sony. Uh, Sony, they killed it this time. I think in the past, Sony, a lot of the times, they focused on a lot of areas that we, did, we don't really don't care about. I'm, I remember a couple of E3, Sony's coming out talking about the PlayStation 2 numbers and all that stuff like that and how much, uh, you know, <laughs> their handhelds are selling and stuff like that. This E3, they focus on what you're there for E3, the freaking games. Man. Yeah. And that's where I think they won the best of the show. They came out with two new IPs, they showed gameplay for each one of it, had great third party games that they showed, and their, all their, their exclusives were, you know, better than Nintendo's and Microsoft's. So, I mean, that's pretty much why they won the show for me. Good, uh, As for Nintendo, who I felt lost the show, okay. the main reason I feel they lost the show is just I feel like the strategy that they're using for the Wii U is the same strategy that they use for the Wii. And I feel that they're not uh, catering to the core audience. I kind of think that they're, they're sticking to this whole entire strategy where, you know, <laughs> we're going to put out the Wii U. We're going to put it out for the soccer moms, and that's what we're going to sell it to, and, you know, forget the core. We'll put out the Mario, the Mario sell. That's just enough for us. You know, they showed them the new Mario game. <laughs> you couldn't really tell. <laughs> you couldn't really tell if it, it was the Mario 3DS game because the, they kept switching back and forth. Like, you know, I don't understand why they don't go for the Mario Galaxy game as a, a launch title. Why they pick... I know that one sells more, but the Mario Galaxy title... Would have been able to show the true, you know, um, capacity or and graphics technology that this Wii U was shown for a next gen title, you know, and, and that's really what you know the biggest thing that upset me about it was I felt that th these games were really next gen, you know, it's a stand, it's just Mario in HD. They're releasing older games and there's no third party support. That that's the biggest thing for me. EA said they're gonna come and support the Wii U. What EA games were announced for the Wii U? Yeah, I didn't hear not one. Not yeah. one, right? Mass Effect 3, I think. Uh, uh, old old games. Yeah, they, they, they showed. Sure. No. So, I mean, that's good. I mean, that's pretty good. I'm going to have to say I agree with you for PlayStation, okay? So, uh, Sony, in my opinion, brought out the best uh, content. You know, they, they had everything laid out. They even brought out a pretty good game that uh, some people might even buy uh, for the... Uh, the Vita. They might even buy the Vita because of the, the CERN is a special game that's only there. Yeah. It's Assassin's Creed 3, yep. but it's a liberation and it's a female assassin and it's something unique there. Plus, if you get that Assassin's Creed plus the Assassin's Creed for PlayStation, you get more content. They get an exclusive yeah. DLC, a whole bunch of stuff. They get you just because you bought both versions and, and they're two and, different versions. And so. th that's the thing that I think they're doing a lot better than Nintendo. Yeah. The whole entire thing where they play the Vita and you can play the, um, the uh, what, is, what was the, the, the PlayStation All-Stars, how you could play on a Vita yeah. and you could play on the PS3. I, I think we've been always asking for this for so many years and I think Sony is might be the one who can do it, you know? And it looked flawless. It looked yeah. flawless like it looked like there's no lag or anything between yeah. it. Now people are saying the game itself looks slower, but that's the pace of Smash Brothers. You yeah. if everyone's comparing to Smash Brothers, be honest, the Smash Brothers, and that's the pace of it. It's not a fast paced game like yeah. that. And they did it flawlessly. Like I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be lots of fun. Yeah, if you go so. play with a Vita, you don't have to have both of them. You can pick one or the other, and that's the way it should be. You know, that's the way it should be. You yeah. can pick one or the other and still have just as much fun doing the other one. You yeah. know? And the cool so, thing about that game is it seems like they're going to get a lot of third party support. Yeah. You know, you got they announced um, the Bioshock and Big Daddy mm -hmm. for that, and it's pretty cool that, you know, they're going to, that's, I think that's going to be the main draw of the game is that they're going to be able to get third party support for some of these titles, whereas, you know, Nintendo, you know, strictly focuses on their stuff, which is pretty, pretty good for, you know, so, that type of experience. So definitely that's my, that's my winner. Now, my loser could be either one. Yeah, okay. it could be, I could see, if someone were to tell me Microsoft lost, I could see that. If someone were to tell me Nintendo lost, I could see that. They're really close to each other. That's just the way it is. Now, I thought at first Nintendo was originally above Microsoft, slightly, mm -hmm. because Microsoft only brought out Halo and Gears of War. Yeah. The end. Halo 4, Gears of War, everything else was the, the Xbox Glass, which Xbox Glass, the What's it called? Xbox? Yeah, yeah, uh, Xbox Glass. Yeah. yeah, so there's something else between it that I feel. Yeah. But um, 
that is going to be really popular in the future. I don't yeah. know if you guys know that. Like, that's going to make them popular. The people are going to jump on board for that. And what people were saying, I saw on TV, take cable companies and stuff like that. Yeah. But what you could do is they can literally stream the TV, like, onto a TV. So people will have to pay for the, the actual cable and stuff like that. Yep. And, like, they're saying it might lead into something eventually where they might even sell Xbox that as cable, cable boxes. Yeah, as cable yeah. boxes. And, I, and I think that's what kind of what did it for me in yeah. terms of why Microsoft is better than Nintendo. Is it, because as far as, like, games and stuff like that, yeah, I mean, they had a new Splinter Cell, you know, the Halo, which all look good. The Call of Duty they always bring out. They stuck, they stuck to the formula. You know their standard formula. I think what they did good was they cut out the, most of the Connect stuff, which I hate, really hated in the past. See, the thing that I have from Xbox, the reason why is they didn't sell it. The reason why they didn't sell it, that's a problem that I have the tendon talk. We go to yeah. in a second. They didn't sell it well. A lot of people know what the heck they're talking about. So what if I have an Android? What are you saying? I can put it here. They didn't really fully explain what it's going to happen, what you can eventually do with this, what this is going to get yeah, into. I think it's it, a tech demo at this point. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It's, and because of that, you're relying on games. That's what you're there for mm -hmm. in the first place. Unless you do something groundbreaking, no one's going to really know. Oh, uh, Internet Explorer on your TV is not groundbreaking? It, <laughs> me, here's the problem. Yeah. Internet Explorer, but you have Bing. No Google. Remember, Bing is with Xbox, not yeah. Google. So you have the worst search engine, because Bing is not Google. Yeah, Bing yeah. is the worst search engine with that, and you have Internet Explorer, which a lot of people do yeah. not like Internet Explorer. Well, it's the only yeah. other, like, it's the only other search engine. Well, I was saying, a lot of people don't like Internet Explorer anyway, to uh, begin with. A yeah, lot of people skip over it. So you're, you're saying, like, you're talking about mediocre stuff. Yes, it's groundbreaking because no one's done it before, but you're talking about mediocre stuff being on there. They're both the same. Like, not too many people like Bing, and not too many people like Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. They're the same thing. Right. So you're looking. You're not looking at someone that's gonna wow people. You know? Yeah. Okay. They had Google and Google Chrome. As a, as yeah. A well, like, I mean, that's obviously not gonna happen. Google TV. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. another. But I'm just saying. Like, yeah. that, then you're you're talking. You know. Yeah. And grabbing. I, I I just kind of feel like they. You know, it's like an obvious thing they should have been doing for the longest time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it really goes into the strategy. They're really trying to make that like your the cable box, and mm -hmm. you know. And the good thing that's the thing I like about Microsoft. They're a little bit more practical than Nintendo. I feel like I feel like it's that's something that I could see myself using. Whereas the Wii U, I'm not too sure if that's something I would use. Like, am I really gonna go and grab, buy this tablet and then shut off my TV and then still play the tablet and then, you know, like, it, it doesn't seem practical. So that brings me to yeah. my Nintendo talk where I think Nintendo dropped down for me because they already, they had some games, you know, Pikmin 3, like, like stuff like that that, you know, it looked good. The Mario, I just thought they contradict themselves because yeah. they're another company, Nintendo, did not sell themselves well. Same the Xbox, they had some features but they didn't sell it well. Yeah. And Nintendo, had um, they showed Mario, okay? Mario looked good. Mario looked really good. But what did they show right after they showed the, the Wii U Mario? They showed a 3DS Mario right after it. And th guess what? That looked good. Just as good as yeah, other Mario. Did. So if you're someone that's going to buy a brand new expensive system, yeah. why would I buy it if I see that I could get a 3DS and have almost the same game? If not, that 3DS version, with all that's all about the gold, they said looks better than the other one, the Wii U version. So yeah. like, why would I even do that? You know, it was stupid. Like, if you're gonna sell something, you don't put two things side by side so people can line it up and, and be like, oh, well that looks almost like this, so why would I go for that one? Yeah. You know, that's one thing. And another thing, they didn't really bring too many good games, uh, hardcore games. So I was like, whatever, they screwed up on that point. And then I was furious what I saw afterwards. Later on, after the night of uh, the presentation for Nintendo, later on at night at like about three, two o'clock in the morning, game trailers uploaded a video from the one of the booths for Nintendo yeah. for the Wii U, showed Assassin's Creed Three gameplay footage. All right, it wasn't like a, a small video; it was like about nine minutes worth of them playing a the game. Yeah. So they had gameplay footage of Assassin's Creed Three for the Wii U. But yet they did not put that up a lot. They didn't put up. They, they had the multiplayer for Wii U as well. They didn't put up. They didn't so put, I have no idea what they, they did. They didn't put the presentation up. Yeah. They, they just didn't do it. They didn't even mention the presentation. Why? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So 
I was watching that was that boogie boogie or whatever yeah, boogie. Yeah. like he said what they call Wii U sounds like an ambulance Wii U Wii U Wii U, Wii U. <laughs> yeah they dropped dead yeah. they someone called the ambulance Wii U. is coming to save their Wii company yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> someone needs to save them right now because yeah. they dropped dead with the sales whoever yeah. was a mark in charge of marketing or whatever screwed up but that's the thing to me though I think the problem with Nintendo is I feel like they don't listen to us I feel like they're gonna sell. They're gonna sell that Wii U because they have fanboys. Because they have fanboys, and because they have Mario. You know what I mean? And, and these other Nintendo titles. And as long as they keep putting those out, they're always gonna sell it. See, the problem, with, I think, though, is that the, the whole entire thing with third-party support for us. You know, like why are, am I gonna buy a Wii U if there's no reason to? You know, there, there's not any extra functionality on this tablet that I feel like they're bringing to these these games that are coming up. That, that's gonna make Wii U. The version I'm gonna purchase for, you yeah. know. You gotta understand that a lot of people forget this, especially you guys, YouTube. You have to listen up. E3 is great. A lot of people love watching E3, but you have to realize that that is meant for developers. Okay, that is meant for other companies like Nintendo. But if people are on the fence, the third-party companies say, "Should we join up with Nintendo or not?" This is their opportunity to show them. Look. Uh, for example, Assassin's Creed, look at the graphics here. Look how good we can make a hardcore game in our system. We can have both the, the regular gamers and the hardcore gamers right here on one system. That's your opportunity to show the people that are on the fence with the Wii U, the graphics, the performance. They're like, you know what? I, I looked at that. I think we could do that too. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if 38 Studios wasn't a prime example of how much money it costs for a video game, to say to tell a company to sit down and try to program something, especially for that gamepad and for your system, if you think someone's going to waste all their money for a chance that no one might buy their damn game, you think someone, a company's going to risk that, going bankrupt to try to help Nintendo? It's not going to happen. Right. That's why you have to sell it to them, the proof to them to say, look, we're going to get people to buy this system. We're going to get people to buy this game. That's why when you're presenting this stuff at E3, you're trying to sell it to the consumers and you're trying to sell it to the developers at the same time. You have a hard task to sell it to both of them because if you have no third party companies, you're going to eventually lose all the consumers. If you have no consumers, you're not going to have third party companies. So therefore, you need to attract both of them at the same time. That's what E3 is for to show other people that are on the fence that, hey, we could do this too. And people yeah. think that, oh, it's just for the yeah. consumers. That's, that, that's the thing. I, I don't think Nintendo thinks they need that. I mean, if you look at the Wii, I mean, they had horrible third-party support. But it's still one of the consumers. If you don't generation. think they need it, then where was EA? Where was EA? Where, where was that company at? EA was, didn't really show too much of their stuff. Why? Because they want to see reaction. They want to yeah. probably see what people are thinking about this stuff. Yeah. And another thing that was not announced in the Wii U, it was not announced Pricing. Right. They didn't announce the price. They didn't announce when it comes out. Mm -hmm. we, we can speculate when it comes out because Amazon knows when it comes out. Yeah. Amazon knows that it's in November. If you look at Amazon, Kyle, Amazon said November. Yeah. And they, they show the prices for the games for $59.99. You can go pre order a game right now for yeah. $59.99. So at least we know some of the prices. No thanks to Nintendo. We know because of Amazon. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess that pretty much sums up the winners and losers. Now we gotta go real quick because we're getting a little too long in the video. Um, it is hot over here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. The air conditioner blasting over. That's where the, the loud noise is. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna go over the best game that was presented E3. Our opinions. Yeah, our opinions. Yeah, our opinions. So you can go first once again. Okay. Say what your game. So sure. I mean, it was a close run for me um, between Watch Dogs and Dishonored, but in the end, it comes down to uh, Dishonored. I just want to explain a little bit about Watch Dogs. I feel like it needs to be mentioned. Um, the cool thing about Watch Dogs, what I really liked about it, was it's um, it's kind of like an open world um, hacking stealth game. And the cool thing about this uh, Watch Dogs is that you can um, basically use um, this. It's like the central operating system. It's kind of like a city of Chicago, and you can use that operating system to control different elements in the city. Mm -hmm. So they sh in the in the gameplay. Um, a demo that they showed. They showed you. Um, you have to infiltrate a, a club to. Um, I think it was like assassinating someone. And then um, the way it worked was that um, to, in order to get into a club, you shut down to everyone's cell phone. So everyone's like looking at their cell phone, and you go right into the club. And then they sh once you're in the club, they show you looking at um, all different people's info, which is highlighted over the heads. 
and you can see like how much they made, what their occupation was. Even one person that said they were HIV positive. Yeah. Like it, that, that was, was nuts. Random. Yeah, like, it was so <laughs> random. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? HIV positive. Yeah. I was like, Wait, what? Like, and, and, and it's pretty cool because it kind of like it, it goes in that tone to our philosophy. Like, oh, and, you know, in the future, like they, they'll know everything about you, and like if they can hack into these computers, they would know the information. So, um, but the coolest thing about it was that. Um, you know, towards the end, you had to uh, track down this guy and take him out. And what he did was he stopped the traffic lights. So the traffic lights, um, they went off and it caused, caused this big old traffic jam. They're, they're, they're all green, right? They're, yeah. They're, they're all green. Yeah, he so. made them all green and they all crashed yeah. into each other. And then he used those cars um, as, uh, he used that as cover to take out the guys. Yeah. So I thought, you know, it was really cool that that type of gameplay. I'm not, why it's not my game of the show is, um, you know, I think it's in proof of concept, really. I'm not sure how much they can expand all that in terms of the world and all that. But, you know, it's a new IP. I'm very excited for it. I'm definitely looking forward to that. But why Dishonor uh, 1, this first gameplay they actually showed for the game. And it's just amazing, you know, in terms of all the different ways you can take out you know, um, the different people that you need to assassinate. So, I mean, Dishonor, if you haven't heard about it, it's a... Um, it's a it's a you're like a supernatural assassin in like the steampunk world. What I really love about the game, the the location is really interesting. It's got that whole entire steampunk uh, vibe where it's kind of like old school Victorian stuff, with like the new cool new technology. And the cool thing is you you you, you can play the game stealth, you can play the game action oriented, and then you also have these superpowers that you have. So sort of like what game? Similar to another game. What, what game do you say uh, it's similar to? Um, I think it has a little bit of elements of he has uh, Bioshock yeah. in there. So that's had, a, that's a, definitely has some Bioshock. De definitely has some Bioshock elements as well as some like Deus Ex. Deus Ex. I was gonna say. So yeah. that's that's why yeah. that's why this game really you know those are the two of my favorite games. That's really like it hits all the spots I need to hit. Man. So in the gameplay demo, the show you have to assassinate these two uh, corrupt parliament members. So you go into um, you have to go into this location, it's like a bathhouse, I believe, and they show all these different ways, all these different demos I show. They show you, they show all these different ways that they get into the bathhouse. One, they show um, you possess, you can possess animals as well as um, people in the game. So they show one, you possess a rat, and you go through the sewers to get into the location. They show another one, you possess a fish. You can go into the like gutters yeah. Yeah, to, to get into um, the, the location again. Then they show that you can you have this blink um, t uh, ability, which is basically a teleport ability. Mm -hmm. So you put like a cursor where you want to teleport, and you teleport right to it. And then they show like the stealth element where you sneak up on people and you you know you do with the, like the quick assassinations on it. And, and the best thing that I saw from it was um, uh, when you're about to assassinate this guy. Um, which the cool thing about it is that it's randomly generated each time you play the mission, so you're not you're not sure exactly where they're going to be each time. So That's you have good. to use different tactics to try yeah. to take them out. The cool thing um, that they showed in the gameplay demo is that you get to like this top floor and you, you, you peek out and you see the guy. He's like talking to a girl or whatever, and you like possess the guy, have him walk out to the balcony, right? And then you you blink to him and then you use this like force push and you push him right over the balcony. And it's like so cool that they were able to have all these different uh, magic abilities, and you can you know use them to the way you wanted to to you know accomplish the task at hand. So that, that's why that game won the game the show for me. Now for me, um, I'm also going to well yours is not a new IP. You you mentioned a new IP which was uh, Watchdog. It was something that no one expected right. when they went there. I'm going with another game that no one expected even heard of and. Uh, it was a pretty cool announcement. It's from the same creators that made a Heavy Rain. Yep. So uh, that that game is actually Beyond Beyond Two Souls, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Beyond so Souls. that's the official name, Two Souls. Uh, it's I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's it's like a mixture of what Heavy Rain was before, but now they're adding a lot of action to it. Yeah. Like that to me, like that's if you liked Heavy Rain, like this is even a, a way more improvement because now you have those elements plus you have a whole other like a whole bunch of action stuff. Yeah. Now, um, based off like the whole story and stuff, it's really like not too certain what's going on. But I, I tell you right away, it's pretty cool. They have actual actress. Uh, is Ellen Page? Ellen Page. Yeah, Ellen Page. Yeah, yeah. Ellen Page. Like she's cute, by the way. I don't know if you've seen the actress, yeah. whatever. But she's you know 
It's weird. It actually looks like your team. It's kind of creepy, but it yeah. actually kind of looks like you're like shaped heavy. Yeah, and the funny thing about that is, like, that's the. I think that was the worst part about Heavy Rain. Like, it was this great story, um, you know, gameplay and cinematic experience. But like they had like French actors, and you could tell like yeah. the, the accents were kind of off, awesome. you know. And like now that we have like we got a, they got a big Hollywood a actress to play yeah. this, it's really gonna add to the. So they did that so like yeah. so people could like try to relate and feel sympathetic yeah. for the character, and yeah. I think it's gonna work off the bat. Oh, yeah. like, and it, it, at first, with their presentation, they showed her sitting down. She's like in a police station. He's sort of questioning her, like, like found you on the side of the road and all this stuff, and. Uh, He's trying to find more information, you know, she pretty much, like, wouldn't say anything, and because she wasn't talking, he was like, I can call someone for you, and I'm trying to help you all, and she kept getting more upset, and then finally, uh, by her getting upset, she was able to, uh, you know, make the, the cup of coffee just fly away, and then crash into the wall, so obviously, you know, she has a, a telekinetic, it's telekinetic, right? Telepathic is Yeah, yeah telekinetic yeah. is where you move stuff, so she gets, she's able to move things, with her mind. So uh, that right away is pretty cool. She might be telepathic too. I'm pretty sure she read the one guy's mind as yeah, well. Yeah. So she might be both. So um, and they didn't really explain too much of the main story. They you just see that like she's troubled and all I know the, the title is Two Souls. So is there another one of her? Is there something else that's out there? Well, I believe David Cage said in um, like some of the gameplay demos and uh, interviews I read is that you actually do play as Ellen Page and this um, other character, which is the so I, I forgot the yeah, name. Yeah, it's the same. Two, yeah. it's two so it's, souls. So, so playing is two yeah. different. So it is two yeah. different characters. Right. Right. And, and, for, and what I read, it, it's going to have like the same type of format that Heavy Rain had, yeah. where you can play through the game. Um, and there's going to be all these branching story paths mm -hmm. and so forth. So like a lot of elements that you like from Heavy Rain, like um, the contextual um, quick quick button stuff mm -hmm. is in there too. And you know, it, it seemed I think it's great that a game like this was made and everyone said, oh, it's not going to sell anything. And then it came out it was a critical and a commercial success. Mm -hmm. And now you could tell that they got the budget they needed to make this game. Which and this game was a shocker. Yeah. Right? I didn't expect it. For Sony to announce that, mm -hmm. like, I mean, during the Sony presentation, mm -hmm. that's why I think they won right there. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the shockers. People were just like, wow, like, it came out of nowhere. You know, people yeah. knew that God of War was going to yeah. come out. People knew that Last was coming out, you know? Yeah. The funny thing about Sony is, like, they're so innovative. Yeah. But then on other areas, they're not. You yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like on the game, in terms of games, yeah. they're the most innovative out of all three of them. They like, try, because they, they take chances. They take chances. That's yeah. the, that's the key of everything else. And uh, I mean, it pretty much sums up this uh, podcast. I mean, we did a lot. Uh, I hope you guys know it's a little bit brighter in this room. We're, we're starting to get better. We're getting more equipment. Uh, yep. What we're gonna bring soon, Drew? What, what we're gonna be working on next so, project? So currently, we're working on you know now that we got all this equipment, we got the lighting, you know, we got the great camera. We're going to be working on um, bringing you guys a, a new segment, which we will be trying to do um, once a week. We're, we're going to try, you know, we're going to try it out. We're going to do our best, and you know, at least we're... once every two weeks. Uh, definitely at least once every two weeks. weeks. Well, hopefully, at the end of every week. But that's probably not going to be for a while when we get every week. But we're definitely doing once every two weeks. Yeah. To, uh, so you know, the format of the show, we're going to um, basically, you know, we're going to talk about our stories of the week. Talk well, about. We have to, we'll, we'll keep that a secret. You want to keep that a secret? Yeah, we'll keep it a secret. Okay. Right? format. We want people to comment on the format. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but after that, the gaming news. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about the gaming news right there. Yeah, that's like you know. Yeah. yeah. That's something we'll, we'll just keep that. Like, we want to keep it a secret. You know, because in case anything does change or anything, we don't know yet. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so basically we're going to be doing that. Uh, we have upcoming games. I have uh, Spec Ops, Lime. You yeah, have... Uh, I'm uh, doing uh, Lollipop Chainsaw. That's coming out this Tuesday. Yeah. Also, um, Quantum Conundrum is coming out uh, the end of the month. So those are the two games you can look forward to um, for me. For I'm also trying to do a version of that ever comes. That's supposed to be... I'm supposed to do a version first, right. but let, let's see if everything works out. But uh, definitely we'll be working on new projects. So, uh, and definitely take a look at all the E3 uh, trailers. If you haven't seen it, go to nottunary.com. The link will be down below. Uh, you know, like us on uh, Facebook. What else we got to do? Uh, we got Instagram. We got Facebook. We got uh, Twitter. Yes. Sure definitely follow us on Twitter. 
Um, make sure to subscribe to us, like we said before. Like any of our videos and leave any comments. Right? And if you are subscribed to us already, thank you so much for subscribing to us. And uh, we're going to try to make this channel a lot better and more entertaining. Yep. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it. So this is Hector. This is Drew. And we're from Nazi Nerd Entertainment. See you, YouTube.